gentlemen, you can take a look at this right there. This is our first story of the day coming to us from thereload.com, thegreatreload.com, and the great Stephen Gunkowski. Tennessee's special session ends without any red flag gun deal. And that's exactly what we want. We wanted this. This is the best outcome because the idea of Bill Lee using this to push through gun control so he could follow this, the Rick Scott path. Because remember, Rick Scott violated the Constitution of Florida by upping the age to 21 after the Parkland massacre because he enacted what I like to call the Spaceballs protocol after an event. Do something! Do something! Do something! They have to do something. Especially when you have these pollsters that say you got to win the white suburban wine mom and they hate the guns. So you got to do all the things that they want, even though the white suburban wine mom will hate you no matter what, because you are the antithesis, uh, the antagonist to everything they stand for. Um, so this this is the best thing we could have hoped for. And it simultaneously uh, makes me laugh because Bill Lee, he's got egg all over his face. He looks like a fool to do this. Um, so no red flag gun deal third point, and it's brought up in the article, but I want to make this point now before we get into it, this deal dying in this red state with all the supposed momentum after the covenant shooting, even though the red flag proposal probably wouldn't have worked on the person that, uh, committed the crime. And you can make that assumption or you can take that for what it is. That mem- that person is a member of a very protected community. Uh, if somebody calls on them, that person who called will probably be in jail before the person who actually committed the crime. But the fact if they could get this uh, modified red flag law, the extreme risk protection order or modified, whatever they want to call it, if they could have gotten this through in the red state of Tennessee, then it was over for everybody else. And Stephen alludes to this, but I want to make sure I've been saying this from the beginning. That's why the special session was so important, not because of anything else, but they thought they had an opportunity through the comment period, through the media, through using college students that have nothing better to do, storming the Capitol, the Tennessee three, those bunch of friggin' losers uh, to try and move the needle on gun control in a red state and doing so would have spelled doom for everybody else. But let's take a look. Here on the Daily Magnum. So, Tennessee will not implement the temporary gun confiscation proposal for individuals a judge finds are a threat that Republican Governor Bill Lee backed in the wake of the Covenant School shooting in Nashville. We all know what red flags are, right? We all know. So, you're at the Chick fil A line one day and you're just having a bad day, and the girl, you're a little, a little snappy to the girl. Janie, Janie, behind you in the car, sees that she's your neighbor because this is just a stupid example. Janie sees this and says, Oh, he snapped at the Chick-fil-A girl. He might be a threat. I know he has guns. I'm going to call in and, and put a, a request to have those guns taken from him before he, you know, while he cools down, judge takes it, doesn't have any training in mental health stamps it. Please come and take your guns. Now you have to go and say, Hey man, I'm not crazy anymore. I don't, you know, I'm not angry anymore can I have my guns back? And you have to prove that. Yeah, it's not a winnable situation for anybody. And that's the fact that um, they come in, they take your property without you really having a right to defend yourself. And the way they get around the Fourth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, is they say, oh, well, you can come in and defend yourself and and, and you can go to the appeals process. Now, that doesn't, that's not how it works. Anyway, back into the article. The special session Lee called to address the mass shootings, the shooting that saw a lone shooter murder three children and three adults adjourned on Tuesday. I like how one primary element of this uh, tragedy in Nashville is completely uh, overlooked, and you know what it is. It's alphabet. It's a bunch of letters that are strung together, Um, and we don't talk about that because we don't want to talk about that because that would make people uncomfortable. The Republican-controlled legislature passed a package aimed at stopping future attacks, especially on schools, But Bill Lee's order of protection plan, which was the modified, supposedly palatable version of so-called red flag laws, did not make the cut. Instead, the deal focused on more modest reforms. It provided $16 million in grants for mental health and uh, addiction services, made minor changes to how the state reports information to the background check system, 
and authorized $1.1 million for a new gun safety advertising campaign and ordered the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations to, re re <laughs> to produce a report on human trafficking. But the resounding failure of Lee's push for a modified red flag law, which will now haunt him as he tries to run for senator, demonstrates how little of an appetite, and this is what I was saying, but Stevens reinforcing it, uh, appetite there is for red flag laws in a red state like Tennessee. This has had success in Rhode Island and California and Delaware, uh, in Florida too, but that was back when it was more purple, um, after the 2019 Parkland shooting in Florida. But all your blue states, they absolutely have this. They love it. That's what they want. They wanted some kind of red flag law. Uh, red states are not. And it looks, and Stephen may be correct, because he's not smarter than I am in a lot of these things, that the idea at the state level for red flag laws has hit its ceiling, um, especially where it is politically viable, at least in the near term, especially true given how poor Lee's efforts to back the proposal went with him abandoning the idea before the session be, even began. He initially made a public effort to get the proposal through the legislature before the end of its regular session. Um, and he he made this a cornerstone. He got right behind this thing. He thought this was going to be his ticket to the Senate. He thought he was going to be able to get it through. There was momentum. He was going to win the wine mom vote. And that was going to create a huge space of support for him to run uh, in the next election cycle. Saying stuff like throughout the last couple of weeks, I've worked with members of the General Assembly, constitutionally uh, minded second amendment protecting members and remember let me get this out of the way real quick they're always going to use things like oh well S second amendment supporters and gun rights people who own guns we all get together and we all agree that things need to be done and that's not the case at all it's not the case at all because we as members of the the gun community we as members of the gun community we understand that every single law or every single restriction, whatever you want to call it, is an infringement. And we have to, once again, go to the big board and talk about how this, any package of laws, which is, you know, what came out was probably the best out of it because government has to do something. Red flag laws violates Article 1, Section 26 of the, the Tennessee Constitution. Citizen of the state has the right to keep bear arms for their common defense. Boom, that's it. So red flag laws, I don't care. And so I don't care what Bill Lee says or who he talks to. And they say constitutionally minded Second Amendment protecting members. Doesn't matter. Blah, blah, blah. Fun story. It violates this. It violates the charter document of the state to craft legislation for an improved order of protection law. That's what they were trying to do. This whole thing was trying to get the idea of an order of protection law through the Senate so he or through the legislature so he could sign it. So then you could go to Texas and then you go to Oklahoma and then you can go to Arkansas and then you can go to uh, Wyoming, Montana, all the red states and say, oh, look, we have an order of protection law. It passed in Tennessee. Let's try it here. Um, safety and preserve. We all know that's a lie. He said this back in April, right after the shooting, he came right out and said, well, we, 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 we need to have order of protection laws. We need to make sure we blah, 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 blah. We all agreed that dangerous, unstable individuals who intend to harm themselves or others should not have access to weapons. You can't pre-crime it. Sorry. And that should be done in a way that requires due process, which, you know, the order of protection violates and a high burden of proof supports law enforcement and punishes false reporting. All of this stuff was just you know, nice icing to try and get this thing done. Of course, he then pivoted calling for a special session because he didn't get it through the regular session to develop proposals. The whole point of the special session was red flag laws. The whole point of the session was red flag laws uh, to prevent future attacks. Even though, like I said, if it was the same person that tried to carry out this attack, nobody would stop them because my feelings and we don't want to insult people. He repeatedly emphasized that his proposal addresses some common complaints, such that the law disregards important due process. But as the session approached, Lee wavered. He dropped red flag provisions from his recommended. We covered all of this here on the channel. Governor Lee praised the deal the legislature was able to pass because it, you know, he doesn't, you know, all politicians. We saw it in the Republican debate when everybody asked if you would support Trump and uh, Vivek raised his hand, even Ron DeSantis looked around and was like, yeah, me too, because that's what they do. They only want to be on the winner's side. It's good we make progress of any kind, and we've made progress and we'll continue. But 
everybody in the left was unhappy, which their leftist tears, and I hate that such a cringe phrase. Thanks, Daily Wire. Their disappointment is just a breath of fresh air to me. Um, I'm very disappointed that we didn't get more done in the special session. House Majority Leader William Lambert said, in the House, we had a lot of bills that got left on the table. If you want to see it, there's a... Um, we went through each bill yesterday. There's actually a thumbnail. There's a clip that on the channel under videos, we went through the special session. We went through the bills. It was a complete waste of time, a waste of taxpayer money. House Minority Leader Karen Camper told the public, people expected us to do something, right? I said it. They expected you to do what? They expected you to... Do something. Do something. Do something. And we did nothing. And she blamed Lee for the outcome. So he was never going to win. He had an opportunity to actually get something done, but he didn't do that. No one has seen him. He's nowhere. The governor failed to get something done. So kiss his Senate chances goodbye, which I am very happy about uh, because he used to be a strong supporter of the Second Amendment. But now he's just a politician, man. He, he goes whichever way the wind blows. And I'm glad to see that the legislature in the state of Tennessee held fast. Good to see that the money that flew in there did not work. So congratulations, Tennessee. You guys survived a storm for now. <laughs>